So ladies and gentlemen, let's begin our program now. Would you please join me in welcoming the Athletic Director of West Virginia University, Mr. Oliver Luck. Thank you, Tony, and good evening. It's a delight to be here. My job is to introduce our great head baseball coach, Randy Maisie. But uh, before I, I do that, let me just say a couple of things. Number one, uh, I'm going to excuse myself after I introduce Coach Maisie because I'm going to go over to the Coliseum and watch us wrestle against Pitt. And so that's at 7 o'clock, and I want to see our, uh, our wrestling match against those Panthers. So I'm going to excuse myself. Uh, but first, let me say that uh, to all the folks who've supported the baseball program over the past uh, year or so with, with Randy coming on board, they've made unbelievable progress and have really done such a great job of reaching out, uh, not just within the Morgantown community, but across the state. All the road games last year that we played in Charleston and in Beckley, this year we'll be down uh, in Charleston and in Princeton to play the Virginia Tech Hokies in a game. We've never played a WVU athletic event or taken one of our athletic events you know, down that far in southern West Virginia, and so that's really going to be a, a fun time. But for all those folks who've supported the baseball program, thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's, it's been just, a, just a little sliver this past year of what we can expect in the future, particularly with a new ballpark coming. I want to thank our elected officials at both the state level and the county level, local level, for their support over really about a two-year period, in particular Bob Beach, who uh, uh, introduced the legislation that uh, resulted in uh, what will become a $20 million beautiful ballpark, not just for WVU, but for a minor league team, a short season A-League, New York Penn League team as well as youth baseball, high school baseball, uh, just a great community asset. So I know Randy's going to uh, thank you as well, but um, on behalf of the athletic department, I really do appreciate all the, the work that you put in. And I want to thank our athletic staff as well uh, for helping uh, put on this great event. We're, those of us that were last year at the first kickoff leadoff dinner, the kickoff leadoff dinner, I guess I could say, I remember when the lights went out and at the Alumni Center, so it was a little bit of a challenge, but this is a great turnout and it's a, an indication of the support, I think, that, uh, that Coach Maisie has, has garnered in uh, his relatively short time here. And one final group to thank uh, in terms of the baseball park, which is really going to be a great venue for, for all of us, uh, is the vision of the Lynch family, John and Bob. They did a marvelous job. They did a marvelous job of understanding how important the university is in this community and a need that we had, which is, of course, the baseball park, and along with Jason Donahue uh, and, uh, and many others that helped uh, really figure out how to work the tax increment financing set up, and, of course, with the support of our elected officials. Now, ultimately, what it really is is probably an unparalleled example of what collaboration and cooperation can do when the university and the county and the city and the state all work together there's really nothing that uh, we cannot accomplish so thanks to all uh, who've really uh, got us to this point because it's really a very exciting time for WVU baseball Randy Maisie showed up in Morgantown a kid from Johnstown Pennsylvania and uh, he really has worked wonders in the uh, short time that he's been here with our baseball program when I took the job as athletic director three and a half years ago, I had people tell me that we should get rid of our baseball program. People said, well, you can't draw a crowd in this kind of a climate. You can't recruit good players. And you don't have a facility that's really worth very much. And then, of course, the Big 12 came along, and I realized what a tremendous opportunity that our baseball program had because of the strength and the legacy of Big 12 baseball. And like every other West Virginian, we kind of sat down and said, well, damn it, we can do this too. We can compete against Texas and against TCU and Baylor and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and all those great programs out in the Big 12. And the first step, and by far the most important step, was uh, to identify Coach Maisie. Had a marvelous career at Clemson as a student athlete, was a coach down in uh, Charleston. Uh, did a marvelous job. He took teams to the NCAA tournament from little old Charleston, went up to East Carolina, uh, did a marvelous job there for three seasons. And uh, with, you were at TCU when uh, we first made contact and started to talk. Uh, and one standard that I had in hiring a new coach was to make sure that I had somebody from this neck of the woods who understood our weather problems and understood 
the fact that uh, baseball is a little bit different in Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia than it is in Texas or Florida or Southern California. And so, uh, Randy, I think you were the last guy that we interviewed in the process, and uh, I thought to myself, this is perfect. You know, Johnstown may as well be Morgantown, right? Same issues. Your dad was a legendary baseball coach up there in, uh, in Johnstown. And it's no surprise, really, I think, to those of us who sat in on that first interview with Randy that he's done so well, uh, has taken a team of, of really good student athletes and, uh, and made them spectacular in terms of what we were able to accomplish last year. There's a lot of excitement this year about what this team can accomplish. And as we get the new ballpark done, we'll have, I think, probably the finest facility in, in the conference. And that, uh, that says a lot. So uh, there's, there's, there's a really good spirit right now in our baseball program. Uh, not only has Randy accomplished that, uh, but he's also done something which is really remarkable. He's taken an incredibly intense interest in youth baseball in this area, Monongahela County, North Central West Virginia. Uh, he's, uh, he understands what he's talking about, obviously a very competent guy, and is trying to help uh, the youth leagues come together, figure out a better way to offer and teach the fundamentals to, uh, to kids, and that's a very special thing. So not only do we love him as a coach, but we love him as a fellow member of our Morgantown community. So with that, let's give a, uh, how about a standing ovation for our head baseball coach, Randy Mazie. Randy, come on up. <laughs> Thanks. A standing ovation. Where's my mother to see this when I need her? Jeez, I told her one day this might happen. I appreciate everybody coming. Thank you, Oliver, for all the kind words, and thanks, Tony, for coming after the, uh, uh, the basketball game. Great game for the Mountaineers today, huh? Any, any time the Mountaineers win a Big 12 game in any sport, that's always a good day. But uh, uh, like you said, we've had... Uh, We've had a pretty good time with this thing so far. And as I look around this crowd and see how many people that are at this banquet, uh, the Lynch's had a vision, uh, Oliver had a vision, I have a vision, our players have a vision. And each day that passes, I think we're getting a little bit closer to, to what we're trying to accomplish in this program. So this, this is no surprise to me. This is all I know how to do uh, is do things in a uh, blow them out of the box type of fashion. And I want this thing to continue to grow every year. But uh, before I go any further, I do have to introduce a lot of people. I, I said when I came here, there's no way that I can pull this thing off by myself. And uh, a lot of people uh, go in to put a lot of hard work into uh, not just this banquet, but, but our baseball program. And, and uh, you're only as good as the people who surround you. And uh, uh, of course, Oliver with his vision, you know, when I came here to to Morgan time for the interview, uh, to be honest with you, I really didn't have any aspirations of, of leaving Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we had just had two children that were born in Fort Worth and we loved it down there. And uh, usually when you find the best opportunity is when you're not really looking for it. So uh, he sold me on his vision of this program and where he wanted it to go. And, and now he's left uh, leaving it up to me to, to follow that vision. So I appreciate that. Uh, Kelly Cunningham is uh, another administrator we have that's so supportive of everything we do, and I appreciate everything she does. Uh, of course, all the uh, uh, people from the state, the representatives and the county commissioners and everybody who's had a hand in this stadium. Uh, the, uh, you wouldn't believe the hard work that goes into this thing, and uh, w this thing has gone down to the, to the wire. Could we say that officially? It's gone down to the wire and then some. I actually, uh, y'all probably don't know this, I listened to the live audio uh, in that last 30 minutes when it was uh, ready to come up for, uh, for a vote and it never came up. And if you've never listened to the live audio of one of their sessions, uh, it's a real treat. You should do that sometime. <laughs> but uh, through a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of people, uh, we got it done and I thank every one of you for that. Uh, of course, Matt Wells from the marketing department, who's our sport administrator, so supportive of everything we're trying to do. Thank you, Matt. And uh, of course, Matt Borman and the, and the Matt Club staff, 
Uh, I personally thank Matt every time I speak for uh, the way he motivates me every day to have events like this. And the way he does motivate me is he tells me I can't do it. And Matt, I appreciate that from you. I can always count on that. And uh, I, I would be really remiss if I didn't thank uh, Greta Gibney and Susan Hammond from the Mac Club, who I've worked with hand in hand over the past month or so to put this thing together. Uh, I know I nag you guys. I don't know if you're in the room right now or you're still outside doing things. Are you guys here? Greta and Susan, please stand, would you please? Greta and Susan. Thank you guys. I'll officially thank you guys in front of everyone. I was in their office four times a day for the last month. One morning I didn't show up till lunchtime. I think they called all the hospitals in town to make sure I hadn't checked in somewhere. But uh, uh, my banquet committee, when I first got here, I put together a group of people through the community that I thought could help me uh, just get a lot of interest up. And I have to thank those people. Uh, Kathy Martin for your undying support, always, and your friendship. Uh, Ron Justice, uh, John Fahey, and Denver Allen. We, we have uh, yearly meetings about how we're going to attack this thing. And if you were at this banquet last year, you'll know that uh, we've grown a little bit since last year. We've outgrown the venue. Uh, we have electricity this year, which is always good. Uh, I didn't bother me because I have an outside voice that I use all the time. Poor Tony Caridi, had to, he had to use an outside voice that he's not used to. And we had some after effects, as I understand, after that last year. We lost our voice for a little while, which for him is a big deal. But thank you for doing this, Tony. And, and my team of people uh, that, that I can't do anything without, of course, my assistant coaches. And let me ask you guys uh, to all stand when I announce you. And then uh, if you guys could hold your applause to the end, because each one of them deserve a standing ovation. Uh, Derek Matlock, who's my recruiting coordinator. <laughs> Stephen Trout, uh, who uh, was a player for me at TCU who coaches our hitters, Coach Trout. Uh, Daniel Cart, who is our West Virginia flavor on the coaching staff. Everybody else has Texas connections, but Daniel's one of the best uh, players to ever come out of the state of West Virginia. Uh, Mike Martin, you guys stay standing if you don't mind. Uh, Mike Martin, who's our director of operations, does a really good job for us. And Cookie, I don't even know if he has a name, he's just Cookie. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do, Cookie. Uh, Grant Dovey, our sports information director. Uh, Nick Presley, our strength and conditioning coach. Jill Weston, who's our academic advisor, who's uh, the best in the business. Uh, Kalen Fisher, who is our trainer, uh, full-time trainer. And Sam Reynolds and Brady Lyles, who are two graduate assistant uh, trainers. Uh, this is my team of people, and everybody who has success at anything has to have a team of people and like I said, you're only as good as the people around you. And I travel with these guys every day. Uh, we're in the office every day. We're on the airplanes together. We're on the buses together. And uh, I appreciate everything you guys do for us. So uh, thank you guys. <laughs> now the important people behind the team, the wives, uh, Mrs. Matlock, Michelle Matlock, would you please stand? Michelle, put the beer down and stand, please. <laughs> Stephen Trout's wife, Blair Trout, he got married about a month ago. She's out of town today, but uh, she uh, uh, has a good hand in, in uh, a lot of you being here tonight. Uh, she does a great job working for United Bank. And Mallory Cart is in the house. Mallory, would you please stand? Thank you to the wives. <laughs> you may continue drinking your beer now. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, you guys probably don't know this, but I'm, I'm not just a coach, I'm a collector. And I collect angels. And so far I have one, Amanda. And our children, who are 
I don't know how they became the most well-behaved children that they were tonight, but that iPad sure helped. Uh, my little guy, Weston, who's seven, who affectionately is known as Whammer. Stand up, Whammer. And Miss Sierra. Sierra is five years old. She's straight out of Woodstock, for those of you who remember Woodstock, with that headband she's got going on. But uh, yeah, thank you for everybody who, who has a hand in our success. And uh, you know, we had a special season last season. Uh, these banquets that all sports have, they usually have them at the end of the year. We can't do that because when our season's over, school's out of session and our kids go home right away. So we can't, I can't really brag on our kids collectively as a team uh, to people in the community uh, until this time of the year, the following year. So uh, I'm going to brag on our team from last year a little bit and what we went through. But first, I want you guys to, uh, we put together a little video from last season of uh, the recap of the season. And let's go ahead and watch that video first. I'm out here. Proud of the Golden Blue. I represent my school, my family, and myself. I do not take credit for my success and only blame for my defeat. I make a solemn promise to my coaches and teammates to be the best possible player I can be. I'll give every ounce of energy to WE until the day is done. I'm out here. Proud on three. One, two, three. Proud. This is gone. A solo shot for Jacob Rice. And now the West Virginia bats are getting hot. See if he can do it on the 2-2. Here it comes. Playing and a miss. There is strikeout 12 for Harrison Musgrave. McBroom at the plate for West Virginia. Alex Smith brings it in. McBroom swings at the first pitch. Here's a deep drive into left center field. This ball's out of here. And West Virginia has a 1-0 lead. and drives one deep to left center field. Going back is Boyer. That ball is good. Grand slam for Ryan Tutlin. With one strike to go for a complete game. There's a swing and a miss. Dan Dudorf gets the job done. A complete game victory for the Montier right-hander in West Virginia. Wins game two. And it's up to Alec Falaro. He's here in the 12th inning. Boucher to the plate. Falaro swings, drives it deep to left. This ball is going to get down. It's a winner for West Virginia. Around third comes McBroom as the Mountaineers sweep the series. Here we go.
Slide wide, slide wide. Virginia wins. The Mountaineers over 10th ranked Oklahoma 9 to 6. They take two of three in the series, and they have a share of first place in the Big 12 Conference. Pitcher of the Year from West Virginia University, Harrison Musgrave. Musgrave stretches and brings it. And a cold third strike. Harrison Musgrave authors his third Big 12 Conference shutout. That's a career-high 14 strikeouts. West Virginia is still alive to win its pool as they face Oklahoma State. And with their last scheduled game of the year, have a chance to play for a Big 12 championship. Swing is a drive left field. Rice is back looking up. It is clear out of here. A line shot right down the left field line for a two run homer to put the Cowboys up 2 0. And he bounces it towards third. Tuntman charges, bubbles, bare hands, throws wild. And the run scores. He's tagging in third is Ray, and he will score. The Cowboys add their second run of the inning. It's now 5 nothing. And he bunts third base side. Ray charges. Bare hands will not get him. I wonder why would Rice do that with two outs? Well, because they need base runners. And a 2-1 pitch. This is smoke to left center field. Might score two, will score two. Doesn't go, and the groove hits it high, deep, clear out of here as he makes it a one-run game. This ball is hit high in the air by Wilson, deep left field. Green back at the wall, leaps. It is clear out of here. And this ball game is now tied at five. This one is drilled to center, Boyd on, dives and makes the catch. He does hit it the right field. Fish charges in, point around third. They're waving him home. Play at the plate. He is safe, and West Virginia wins in the 10th. I don't know how you guys feel watching that, but I know how all of our players feel watching that, the same way I do. It just gives you chills every time you, you look at it because, as I told our guys after that game, when we finished that game, we still had a chance to win the, win the conference. If, if the game following ours would have went the right way, we would have played in the championship the next day. So we won our, la we won our last game, which is really hard to do in college baseball because of, of the teams that make the – 64 team field in the NCAA, only one team wins their last game. All the others lose their last game. And to win our last game in walk-off fashion, there's only two teams that in the nation that did that last year, and that was us and the national champs. So that, that really made the offseason really go well, knowing that that's a, just a snapshot of things to come here, that, that we finished the season as successful as I thought we started it. So what, what a great season we had. as as Tony said we were picked to finish dead last by everyone. No, not one person who had a vote picked us next to last. Everybody who had a vote picked us to finish last. And when Grant, our SID, came to practice and told me that the votes were out, it was a day in February, we were practicing on Holly Field, and I got the team together and I said, guys, I've got great news. I said, everybody around this whole league thinks that you guys think. 
And that was all the motivation this team needed. When you play like that, uh, when, when the other team thinks you're not very good and everybody at the game thinks you're not very good, it's really easy to motivate yourself. And if any of you were at the uh, banquet last year, uh, you may have heard me say that uh, people better be careful uh, underestimating this group of Mountaineers because you, you, you can look at their record from the year before, but there's no way you can measure the heart that's inside their chest. So I, I think we proved that last year. Uh, we beat Texas twice. We beat Oklahoma twice. We beat TCU twice. We beat Texas Tech twice, and we swept Kansas. Those are some really good baseball programs. For a, for a team that didn't even uh, qualify for the Big East tournament the previous season, to rattle off those wins on your resume uh, just says volumes about uh, how our guys played last year. Uh, and it was fun, you know, there was no expectations. Uh, things have changed a little bit, I think. But when you're coaching with no expectations, you have a no fear attitude. You've got nothing to lose. So uh, that was a lot of fun. The wins are a lot of fun. Watching that video is a lot of fun. But, but that's not what's important to me. These guys know that. Uh, they know I, I love winning. We're going to win. We're always going to win here. But that pales in comparison to some of the other things we accomplished last season. We played 49 of our 56 games away from Morgantown. Every Thursday uh, last spring, we loaded a bus and left town. Even the home games were two and a half hours away. Uh, so we hardly ever got to sleep in our own beds. Uh, it's hard to get into a routine that way. We missed 31 days of school as a baseball team last year. We were students three days a week. We made a 3.0 team GPA that semester. And these guys will tell you, uh, the way we went about it was we actually had, through the help of Kelly Cunningham and Jill Weston, we had, uh, these guys had tutors that would actually go to the classes they were missing, audio tape the lectures, download them to the internet, and our guys would listen to them uh, in, on the airplanes, on the bus, in the hotels. And if you thought sitting in class was boring, Try listening to a class while you're riding down a road on a bus with a movie on a DVD. But, but what they did, just watching the guys study everywhere they were and what Jill Weston does for us uh, was unbelievable. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, some of the other things this team accomplished, uh, uh, it said that there were four players drafted off of last year's team. We led the nation of all the 300 and some Division One baseball teams we led the nation. We had the most drafted players on our team that actually returned to school. Harrison Musgrave was drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies. Sean Carley, uh, without even being eligible, was drafted by the San Diego Padres. And Ryan McBroom, drafted by the Kansas City Royals, who all put their dreams on hold uh, to come back and get another year toward their education. And I think that says volumes about uh, what we have going in our program, that those guys are willing to do that. I think that says that they're having a real good experience here. <laughs> Believe it or not, the Mountaineers were in the top 50 in the nation in attendance last season. Who would have thought that? Prior to last season, the largest crowd ever at Holly Field was 1,200 people. The fifth largest crowd in the history of the program was 600 people. Last year for the Pitt game, in which we signed the bill uh, for the new stadium, uh, we had 2,500. And people were literally hanging from the trees trying to watch that game. We're actually bringing more bleachers in uh, this year to accommodate people. But the support, not just in Morgantown, but around the state was, uh, was unbelievable. We had great crowds everywhere we went. And I uh, really hope that continues. Uh, we had a top 50 recruiting class uh, this past season, thanks to Coach Matlock, Coach Trout, Coach Cart, uh, going out there. And you have no idea what these guys go through on the road recruiting in baseball when you have to go to a, sit at a baseball tournament when the temperature is 110 degrees and the first game of the day starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and the last game starts at 10 o'clock at night. 
and you sit through all of them. So having a top 50 recruiting class uh, says volumes about the work that those guys put in. We go, the first thing I did when I got here last spring was I got the team together and I said, guys, we're in the Big 12 now. This is the Big 12. This is really good baseball. This may seem pretty tough to you, but we can do this. We can do this. And we're going to start tomorrow by we're going on a hike. We call it the Big 12 hike. We actually go out and hike 12 miles right along the river on the trail system down there. And, you know, when you first, the reason we do it is because when I first tell the team you're going on a 12 mile hike, like I see some of y'all looking at me like, are you crazy? It sounds insurmountable when you first hear it. A 12 mile hike, are you kidding me? But if you think about it, as long as you just keep putting one foot right in front of the other one, if you do it long enough, you're going to end up going 12 miles. And that's what we do. Something that seemed insurmountable when we jumped into this league, if we just took it one game at a time and one step at a time, before you know it, you accomplish your goal. And that was uh, when we got finished with that, uh, our guys, I think, looked back, to, back at that thing and said, you know what? It, it wasn't that tough. We, we, we just walked 12 miles. If we get together, I think we can do this. And I think as a group, our guys collectively, I think that was a big moment for us. So uh, that was, uh, that, that's the type of program we're trying to build. We're not just trying to win games. We're trying to build people. And when you do that, the thing that I really take my hat off to our players is the community service that they do. And I know some of y'all have been touched by this, but uh, to tell you the story of what happened in Oklahoma last year, we finished the regular season in Stillwater at Oklahoma State. And the conference tournament was in Oklahoma City. Well, we finished playing on Saturday in Stillwater, and the conference tournament wasn't to start until Wednesday. So we went over on Sunday. And we were the only team in town. And our guys were lifting weights at the, at the YMCA when the, when the tornado uh, hit more Oklahoma. And Coach Matlock and Coach Trout and myself were eating lunch. And like everyone, we were watching it on CNN. Uh, but with the other eye, we were looking out the window because at that point, I think the closest they got to us was three or four miles away. And they're so unpredictable, you never know what's going to happen. But you know, as you're watching it on TV, you can't really appreciate the gravity of the situation until you see the aftermath. And when we saw the aftermath, we just couldn't believe what had happened and how close we were. And some of, some of our players texted me right away and said, Coach, what can we do? We've we got to do something. We're right here. So I called the, the Moore Police Department and called the bus driver, and I said, let's go. Let's get on the bus. Let's get down there and do what we can. And they wouldn't let us in town because it was so soon. It was right after it happened. The first responders and the families, they wanted to make sure they got back in town first. So uh, we couldn't do anything that day. So that night, I took all the guys uh, to Walmart and told every guy on the team, go get a shopping cart and fill it up with anything you think somebody might need who had just lost their home. And as I walked around to Walmart and saw our guys, there were kids' shoes and diapers and blankets and clothes, and, and they were just filling their carts up. I said, you know, we'll figure out how to, how to pay for it later. And as we were doing it, a lady walked in and, and saw what we were doing, and she asked us uh, why we were doing that, and we told her, and she said, well, I, I just lost my home this morning. She said, my kids were in school in Moore, she said, I went for a two or three hour period this afternoon and I didn't know if my kids were alive. And that was, that was neat for our guys to experience that. And, and she went through our shopping carts and, and just took some stuff that she needed to survive. So we, uh, after we played that week, we, we played our last game on Saturday. And 
you saw the last game. There was one more game left. We had an opportunity to play for the championship. It didn't work out. TCU had to beat Kansas, and they couldn't do it, so our season was over. But we couldn't fly back to Morgantown until Monday. So we had Sunday with literally nothing to do. And I told the team, I said, this has been a long, long season. We've played 49 games on the road. You've hardly got to sleep much. You've traveled so much. I said, I don't care if you sleep all day. You have the day off. I said, but I'm going down into Moore, Oklahoma. I'm getting on that bus, and I'm seeing who needs help. I said, the bus leaves at 4 o'clock. If you want to be on it, be on it. If you're not, I'll go by myself. And when I got on the bus, every guy in the team was on the bus. And we went into Moore, Oklahoma that afternoon and walked the neighborhood and, and found somebody that needed some help. And we have a video here that, that uh, documents what we did that day. Go ahead and play that video. I've been a walking heartache, I've made a mess of me. The person that I've been lately ain't who I want to be. But you stay here right beside me, and watch as the storm blows through, and I need you. Bless you guys. Very much. You guys have a good, good day. For the longest time, and the, the term around here has always been May 3rd, 1999 is when we got hit. And so everybody said May 3rd, you knew what they were talking about. And now there's a new term, it's May 20th for us. And um, that'd be a day that you know, this chapter ripped out of my, like the book of our lives, and God started a new chapter. Wish we could stay to the end. We got flight to West Virginia. No, no, no. I guarantee you, I'll be pulling from that and here's here on that unless you're playing all you. <laughs>
All right. How about a warm Mountaineer welcome for Mark Ellard in the house, all the way from Moore, Oklahoma. Wow, seeing that video brings back a lot of memories. First of all, my wife and I would like to thank you for inviting us to be here. It is an honor to be here with you this evening. I've never spoken to such a large group before, so please forgive me if I stumble a bit. I was born and raised in Oklahoma, and I've lived in Moore most all of my life. Moore, Oklahoma has always been known as Tornado Alley, and since 1998, we've had three major tornadoes hit our community. May the 20th was a normal day, and I was at home working around the house, as I always do on my day off. The news reports had reported there was a strong possibility of tornado activity, so most of the day I spent keeping an eye on the weather. Around 2 in the afternoon, it started to hail, hailstones the size of softballs, which lasted about 15 minutes, and then it got very calm. At about 2.30, the tornado sirens start, began to go off, and I could hear the tornado approaching. It was then when I went and took shelter with my dog in the closet. And when the tornado hit, I could hear things crashing. The windows were breaking. The roof was ripped off. It was at this point, for the few, next few minutes, I, I didn't know whether I was going to live or die. When the roof was torn away, I could see the tornado going over the house. It looked like swirling dirty air and it was very loud. People say that it sounds like a freight train and that's what it sounded like to me. When it was over, when I came out of my closet, the whole house was destroyed. I could see across the street and the devastation at the hospital. I truly believe that God spared my life this day, on that day. My kids and I spent the next two days camping out there and keeping an eye on the things that we had no way to secure. It was a long week of sifting and sorting through what was left of our belongings. Then on Sunday afternoon, the West Virginia baseball team showed up and helped us move debris. For the next four hours, we worked side by side, moving most everything that could be moved by hand to the curb so the city would collect it. Up to this point, this had been a big concern of mine. I did not know how that we were going to get the mess cleaned up. And in one afternoon, with your help, we were able to accomplish more than I thought possible without machinery. We are so thankful for the coaches, the staff, the student athletes, for the great compassion that they've shown us and to many others in our community during a very tough time. These young men are very respectful and represent this university in a great way. The way in which you gave your time, resources, will always be remembered and appreciated by us and many others in our community. Under the leadership that chose to make such decisions as was made in May, at Oklahoma, I'm certain that everyone who comes into contact with this program in the future will benefit in a positive way. I also believe that they will enjoy great success in everything they attempt to do now and in the future. You can be for sure I will be rooting for the Mountaineers and wish them every kind of success possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, and obviously our hearts are with you and all the folks in Moore, Oklahoma. Thank you so much, and Randy, thank you for bringing him in here for this evening. I think a lot of people heard about what the Mountaineers had done but had not seen 
what the Mountaineers had done, and that's absolutely wonderful. Folks, let's meet now members of this 2014 West Virginia University baseball team. Would you please welcome a senior from Manassas, Virginia, number 38, Zach Barjon. A junior from Brandon, Oregon, number 50, Michael Bennett. A junior from Silver Spring, Maryland, number four, Bobby Boyd. A junior from Melbourne, Florida, number 23, Sean Carley. Right up here, guys, front and center, right up here. Alphabetical now, we'll be judging at home. A freshman from Centennial, Colorado, number 43, Dimitri Cassis. A senior from Yardville, New Jersey, number two, Michael Constantini. A freshman from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, number eight, Sean Corso. A freshman from Capel, Texas, number 47, Jackson Kramer. A freshman from Cypress, Texas, number 17, Chad Donato. A junior from Churchville, Pennsylvania, number 15, Billy Fleming. A junior from New Martinsville, number 21, Justin Fox. A freshman from Highland Heights, Ohio, number 42, Ray Guarini. A freshman from Falling Waters, West Virginia, number 39, Daniel Helene. A junior from Sugarland, Texas, number 28, Alec Horvath. A sophomore from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, number 34, Ryan Hostrander. A junior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, number 46, Brad Johnson. A senior from Carmichael's, Pennsylvania, number five, Joby Lapkowitz. A senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia, number 13, Ryan McBroom. A junior from Olathe, Kansas, number 25, John Means. A freshman from Meadow Place, Texas, number 29, Dakota Mills. A junior from Louisville, Texas, number three, Taylor Mundine. A redshirt junior from Nutter Fort, West Virginia, number 11, Harrison Musgrave. A junior from Weirton, number 19, Max Nogay. A junior from Tulsa, number 22, Cameron O'Brien. A senior from Merrill, Wisconsin, number 10, Paul, or Pascal Paul. A freshman from Lippin, Texas, number 12, Shea Phillips. A senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 24, Jacob Rice. A junior from Lake City, Florida, number 35, Cody Semler. Freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, number seven, Jordan Surgeon. A junior from Hearst, Texas, number 40, Trevor Sims. A freshman from Hooversville, Pennsylvania, number 31, Tony Strasser. A senior from Hershey, Pennsylvania, number 27, Ryan Tezak. Sophomore from McKinney, Texas, number 18, Ross Vance. A senior from Wheeling, number nine, Corey Walter. A freshman from Oswego, Illinois, number 48, Nick Wernke. And our final member of the Mountaineers, a freshman from Arlington, Virginia, number 44, Sean Wood. A 
ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for your West Virginia University Mountaineers. So there, these are the Mountaineers, and these guys have all signed their national letters of intent, but there's one more addition to the roster, and let's bring up Coach Mazey. Yeah, as Tony said, we're going to do something tonight that's unprecedented in college baseball. We're actually going to sign a new player tonight to a letter of intent right here in front of everybody. And... Uh, we're excited to do this. This player is, uh, his name is Sean Patterson. He's a right-handed hitting, right-handed throwing, utility player from Bridgeport, West Virginia, home of Harrison Musgrave. And Sean is 10 years old. He was born with an affliction by the name of primary immunodeficiency. He was born without an immune system. Every Tuesday morning, Sean goes through a, about a two and a half hour procedure to infuse through, through a blood transfusion an immune system into his body that lasts approximately a week. And he gets another one the following Tuesday. And the following Tuesday. And the following Tuesday. So, if you've never donated blood before, if you have donated blood before, you never know where it's going. But tonight, you're going to see where it's going because Sean needs people to live. He can't go to school. It's really hard for him to be on any kind of a team because his treatments wear him out pretty good. So we put him on our team. And if you see it, Ever come to one of our practices, Sean's there, taking ground balls, hitting in the cages. He's a better hitter than half the guys we got, I think. <laughs> but we're going to sign Sean to a letter of intent tonight. So I would love for you guys to help me welcome Sean, his little brother Chris, his mom Amy, and his father Jeff to the stage.
There's no player on this team that can help us win a championship more than Sean Patterson. So we're thankful to have him as a Mountaineer. Let's talk about, you know, so far tonight I've doted on last year's team. Let me just spend a few minutes talking about what these guys have accomplished so far. I don't know if you've ever seen us play, but we're a lot of fun to watch. We play really hard. We're very enthusiastic and energetic, but as I've told you, it, it means more to me what we do off the field. This past semester, in the fall semester, this group of guys took a total of 217 classes. They made zero Fs, nine Ds, 23 Cs, 81 Bs, and 104 As. For <laughs> Team GPA 3.0. We currently lead all sports at WVU in community service with 600 hours of community service to this point in the season. That makes me more proud than, than any earn run average, RBIs, this is, this is the family that I spend all my time with on the road. There's no group of guys I'd rather, rather be with than this group of guys standing right in front of you. <laughs> you know, building this program, it's kind of like being a parent. There's different stages that your children go through that it's kind of funny. We have Sierra who's five and Whammer who's seven. You know, when they're born and they're infants and that first year, that, that's kind of your favorite stage. You know, they're babies, you carry them everywhere. And then when they get out of that stage and they can hold the bottle themselves, that's a huge moment as a parent, right? When you don't have to eat your dinner like this, holding the bottle for your child. You all know what I'm talking about. When they start doing that, that becomes your favorite stage. And then they start crawling and walking and making noises, and then that becomes your favorite stage. And it's constant how each stage that they go through becomes your favorite one. And building this program, I think, is a lot like that. What we went through last year when there was no expectations and being picked to finish last, that, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun playing like that. It was a lot of fun because I didn't have to motivate these guys. But that stage has passed. Now we do have expectations. The next stage is the stage where you start playing for championships, getting into the postseason, playing in NCAA regionals. And after you get to that stage, then the next stage is super regionals. And then the next stage is the College World Series. And then the next stage is you come to expect that every year. And there's a progression of how that is supposed to happen. But occasionally, a group of guys can come along and expedite that entire process and screw up the timeline, so to speak. And you can do some of the greatest things before you do some of the, the lesser things if you have the right group of guys. And I don't know where we're going to be picked to finish this year. Somebody in the crowd told me tonight that there were two different polls that came out that said the Mountaineers weren't ranked, didn't even get a vote in one of the top 60 teams in the nation in two different polls. And I love telling our team stuff like that because I can feel the fire burning within, within them when I say that to go out and prove to people that they're underestimating the Mountaineers. They don't, they say you can't, you can't measure what they do in more, more Oklahoma, and you can't measure what they do in the classroom, and you can't measure any of that stuff. And if you ever see us play, at the beginning of the first video, you saw our guys get together and say something. So anytime you see our team get together and have a huddle and say something, we have a creed that we go by. And they say the same thing at the end of every practice and then at the end of every game. And we're going to put it on the screen, but our guys are going to say it loud and proud, just as loud as they can go. And old Sean Patterson is going to lead us off, and he's going to start us. Go ahead, Sean.
Okay, guys. You can, you can go now. All right, I appreciate every one of those guys. I appreciate every one of you. What, what can you do? What can you do to help us go where we want to go as fans, as supporters? And I would tell you this, don't, don't come to the games for entertainment purposes only because it's more than that. When you guys come to the games, it really helps us win. It really, really helps us win. We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have finished third in the Big 12 if we wouldn't have finished in the top 50 in attendance last year. Those two things go hand in hand. So we, we need your support. Our guys play better when you're there. To see that crowd roll in against Pitt just energizes your team. So the first thing I want you guys to do is jump on the bandwagon. Everybody criticizes those people to jump on the bandwagon. That's one of my favorite places in the world because you don't have a bandwagon if you're not winning games. Nobody wants to jump on board a team that doesn't win very much. So jump on that bandwagon. And it's a great start by coming tonight, but buy a season ticket. You know how much a season ticket costs for 17 home Mountaineer baseball games against these opponents, Texas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Virginia Tech, Marshall, Maryland, Ohio State, Pitt. Those are our, that's our home schedule. For those 17 games, a season ticket, you can get for $60. You paid more to come to this dinner tonight. <laughs> for $60, you can see these guys play their hearts out for the Mountaineers. Who wouldn't do that? How, what's it cost to go to a pirate game? One game costs three times that much. So please, you know, support us. Buy a season ticket. And when you do, I want you to leave this banquet tonight, and everybody you run into, I want you to tell them what a great experience you had tonight, meeting these guys and seeing what they do and seeing how they go about it. And get other people on the bandwagon. Next year, I want to have, we have 450 people here tonight. Next year, I want to have 900. If we double this thing every year, we're going to end up having to do this in the football stadium. But just get people interested for us. That's what we need. We really need your support. We also have a, a fundraising club we call the Friends of Mountaineer Baseball. And if you join that club, it's exactly what you are. You're a friend of the program. And the people who donated to that organization last year, those proceeds went to the Walmart with the shopping carts that our guys got for the victims. So when you support our program, you're not just supporting us, you're supporting everybody out there. So get, get people excited about WVU baseball.